Morning rays painted the horizon as the school bus trundled along its route. Inside, a sense of routine hummed in the air until a chilling scream shattered it. A child's desperate voice echoed through the bus's intercom, frantic words tumbling out. Panic swept the vehicle as children exchanged worried glances. The driver, heart pounding, grabbed the radio, relaying the alarming situation to the authorities. The bus shuddered to a halt on the roadside, the stillness contrasting with the urgency of the call. A mystery had unfurled, setting the wheels of action in motion. Henry had evacuated the bus and was waiting outside with all the school kids. They were terrified, and some of them were even crying, and Henry felt helpless for not being able to help them. He had called the police already, and all he could do now was wait. Mr. Henry, is something bad going to happen to us? One of the kids asked him. No, of course not. The police will be here soon, and everything will be okay. I promise I will get you home safely, he said. However, he wasn't entirely sure yet whether he could keep that promise. When the police finally arrived, they hurried inside the bus. Time was ticking, and they had lives to save. But what had Henry and the kids heard on the bus? What had happened? And why did he call the police? Was everyone going to be okay? It was a beautiful morning as Henry was driving around town, picking up all the kids to drop them off at school. Some days, usually by the end of the week, they were all a little bit quieter. But today was Monday, and they had many stories to tell each other about what they had done and seen over the weekend. Henry greeted each of them by name as they got on his bus, after waving goodbye to their parents. Hello, Ryan. Good morning, Kate. Nice haircut, Jonah. And they all told him, Good morning, Mr. Henry. He'd been driving the same bus for years now, and they had all gotten to know each other better over time. All of the kids were glad to see their friends again, and they were chatting excitedly. Their babbling filled the bus, and it seemed to be the perfect beginning of the week. Nobody expected the day to end like it did, which was in absolute chaos. Even the police would get involved. The bus had almost arrived at the school, and Henry only had a few more stops to make. However, that was when the terrifying scream echoed through the bus. Time seemed to freeze, and Henry couldn't believe it at first. Was this real? Or was he imagining things? However, as he looked over his shoulder, he saw that the kids were absolutely terrified. They had obviously heard it, too. They had all heard the scream, which had mentioned a bomb in the bus, and ended with, Countdown initiated. We have minutes to live. Henry knew he needed to act fast. There was no time to lose here, or things might end very badly. He did not waste a second, and he immediately slowed down, stopping the bus on the side of the road. He knew what he needed to do. He had been trained for this, but he had hoped he would never have to use it. And he hadn't, in all those years, until now. Henry yelled, Everybody, get out, now! As he opened the door and jumped up, ready to help the kids get off the bus as quickly as possible. As he looked around outside, he saw that he had parked the bus right next to an open field. This was good. All of you, get out on that field and stay there. Do not leave and keep your distance from the bus. He wanted to make his way back inside, but he stopped and turned back to the kids again, looking at them with a stern expression. Now, does anyone have a confession to make? He asked. It remained silent. Well, which one of you was that? Was it some kind of joke? he asked. Still, nobody answered. He realized that none of the kids in front of him was the culprit, and instantly he ran into the bus. He called the police, telling them about what had happened. He told them the location, and they told him they would immediately send someone over. Sir, 
Make sure everyone has left the bus and get as far away from it as possible. Someone will be right with you. Henry quickly checked all the seats in the bus and saw that it was empty, so he went outside to join the group of anxious children. Mr. Henry, what happened? Is there really a bomb on our bus? A little girl asked him. He didn't know what to tell her. Everything will be okay, don't worry. The police will be here soon, and then I will drop you all off at school, Henry assured the kids. However, it didn't work as well as he had hoped. Some of the kids started crying. Others kept asking him, I want to see Mommy. Can you bring me home? And one kid even screamed, We're all going to die! He continued trying to calm them down, but he couldn't stop thinking about what had just happened. The scream was definitely real. Otherwise, the kids wouldn't be so upset. And it had sounded like it was coming from the intercom, but how was that possible? Nobody had even been near him at the moment it happened, and the intercom in this bus was not accessible from other places on the bus except from the driver's seat. Henry was only getting more confused the more he thought about it, so he decided to try to let it go. He had done his part, and now there was nothing else for him to do but keep the children safe and wait for the police to arrive. He hoped they would get there in time. He didn't even want to think about the horrible things that could happen if it went wrong. Meanwhile, Officer Dillon and his colleague, Officer Williams, were on their way to the bus. They had also sent over a bomb squad, and one of their colleagues from the juvenile division had joined them as well, seeing as the threat was seemingly made by a child. They were in a hurry to get there. They still didn't know whether the threat was legit, but they did not want to take any risks. Luckily, the bus wasn't far from the police station. Soon, they arrived, and they quickly got out of the car. Henry immediately came to them. Thank you for coming so soon. This is horrible. I don't know what to do, he exclaimed, obviously in distress. It's okay, sir. We will take it from here. Thank you, the officers told him. They turned to the children, who seemed even more frightened now that they saw the police had joined them, and told them not to worry. Everything will be okay, kids. You'll all be sitting in your classroom soon. Another school bus was on its way to pick the children up. There was no reason for them to stay here, and it was even better if they were as far away from this bus as possible. Henry explained that all of the students had gotten off the bus, and nobody was left inside. The officers decided that they were going in. If the threat was real, they had no time to lose. They told Henry to stay away from the bus and wait for the bomb squad. They should arrive within minutes. Officer Dillon carefully entered the bus, followed by his colleague. He went over to the driver's seat to check the intercom, and he grabbed the microphone and spoke into it, testing to see if it was working properly. Nothing seemed to be wrong with it. He turned to the aisle and said to his colleague, You check the right side, I'll do the left. The kids had left in a hurry, and most of them had left their jackets and backpacks in their seats. Officer Dillon started at the front and carefully grabbed a backpack to look inside. Once he saw that there was no bomb in it, he put it back and continued with the next. Officer Williams was doing the same on the other side, and they had gotten to row seven when they heard Henry calling out to them, asking if they had found anything yet. The officers told him, No, we haven't. Stay back there. We'll let you know if we find anything. Keep your distance. Henry was surprised by their commanding tone, but he realized they were just doing their job. He backed away and patiently waited for them to finish their search. The officers went back to searching the bus, and within a couple of minutes, they had made it all the way to the back. They had searched every backpack, every jacket, everything they found that could contain a bomb. But they had found absolutely nothing suspicious. Emerging from the bus, Officer Dillon exchanged a worried glance with Officer Williams. Their faces mirrored the weight of uncertainty and the pressing question, 
of who could have made the threat. Williams raised an eyebrow towards Henry, who was watching them with a mix of anxiety and anticipation. Could he? murmured Dylan, making it more of a thought than an actual question. Henry's heart sank as he read the suspicion in the eyes of the officers. His palms grew sweaty, and his mind raced back through the years, years filled with laughter, innocent pranks, and the warm greetings exchanged with the kids. The idea of being suspected after such loyalty was a dagger through his heart. He swallowed hard, trying to find words. Gathering by the bus's entrance, the officers took a moment to deliberate. The intercom, only Henry has access to it from the driver's seat, Williams said pensively. Dylan frowned. But he's been with the school for years. Why would he pull something like this? The weight of the situation pressed down on them as the unexplained voice from the intercom lingered in their minds. Word of the mysterious event on the bus began to spread among the parents like wildfire. Huddled in small groups, they whispered their concerns and theories. Henry has always seemed so kind, one parent remarked. But people change, another countered, feeding the growing wave of speculation. The trust once held seemed to be on the edge, teetering dangerously. Officer Williams took a deep breath, steeling himself for the confrontation. Approaching Henry, he said, Henry, you need to come with us. We have some questions. The atmosphere grew tense, with the children watching silently. Henry, his face pale and voice trembling, replied, I don't understand. I would never hurt these kids. But the gravity of the situation was undeniable, and there were answers that needed finding. Word about the perceived threat spread like wildfire, and within no time, a swarm of irate parents surrounded the bus, their faces contorted with rage and worry. How could this happen? One mother shouted. Another father demanded, Our children's safety should be a priority. The murmurs grew louder, everyone seeking answers, their trust in the school's safety measures beginning to wane. Officer Dillon approached Henry with a heavy heart. Henry, for the safety of everyone, and for procedural reasons, we need you to come to the station with us, he said his voice filled with regret. The weight of those words crushed the atmosphere, and as Henry was led away, many eyes followed him, some filled with doubt, others with sympathy. Outside the school, confusion reigned. The usual orderly drop-off routine was disrupted, replaced by frenzied conversations and a barrage of camera flashes. News vans had started to pull up, with reporters rushing to capture the unfolding drama. Parents huddled in groups, exchanging information, their faces painted with worry. The school's calm facade was replaced with an atmosphere of palpable tension. Under the stark, cold light of the interrogation room, Henry sat across from Officer Williams. Files were spread out on the table, documents detailing Henry's impeccable years of service. We need to go over everything, Henry. Start from the beginning, Williams began. Henry's eyes darted over the papers, his own life being scrutinized, wondering how he ended up in this grim situation. Henry took a deep breath, his voice thick with emotion. Officer, I've dedicated my life to those kids. Every morning, greeting, every journey. It's all been about their safety and happiness. Tears welled up in his eyes. I would never jeopardize that. Please believe me, he implored, his voice shaking with a mix of fear and sincerity, hoping his truth would shine through. At the precinct, officers meticulously combed through Henry's statements. The more they dissected his words, the clearer it became that there were no inconsistencies. Every detail checks out, Officer Riley remarked, flipping through the notes. 
The room was thick with tension. As the hours passed, frustration mounted. They had a duty to protect, but without leads, they were treading water. In his cell, the dim light only slightly illuminated the turmoil on Henry's face. Confusion swirled, anger bubbled, and fear gnawed at him. He clutched the bars, feeling their cold indifference. Each passing second felt like a verdict on his innocence. Memories of joyous school trips were now overshadowed by the sting of being detained, suspected of the unthinkable. With every new lead turning into a dead end, investigators were growing increasingly restless. They combed through every shred of potential evidence, but found nothing to implicate Henry. We're running in circles, Detective Mason exclaimed, rubbing his temples. Their diligent search had yielded nothing concrete, and the mounting pressure to solve the case was palpable. We need to check the bus again, Officer Lara declared, determined not to overlook any detail. The decision was unanimous. The officers arrived back at the scene with the hope that revisiting the source of the mystery might unveil some overlooked clue or hint. Armed with flashlights, they embarked on their meticulous inspection, each crevice and corner holding potential answers. Inside, the bus felt different, deserted and eerily silent. The usual chatter and laughter were replaced by the weight of uncertainty. Rows of empty seats stared back, holding their secrets close. The soft hum of the bus's machinery was the only sound, adding to the haunting stillness. This vessel of daily joy and routine now stood as a symbol of a mystery unsolved. Stepping onto the bus again, the atmosphere felt heavy with unsaid words and possibilities. Officer Lara's shoes made a muted sound against the floor as she cautiously moved ahead. Officer Riley followed closely, his senses on high alert. Both were mentally prepared for another round of fruitless searching, but duty demanded thoroughness. In the thick silence, a soft, almost inaudible sound danced to Officer Riley's ears. Did you hear that? He whispered, pausing in his tracks. Lara, tilting her head slightly, strained to catch the elusive noise again. For a fleeting moment, it seemed like imagination. But there it was, ever so soft. A distant, muffled rustle. Drawing close, the officers exchanged puzzled glances. Could we have missed something? Lara pondered aloud, her voice hushed. The weight of responsibility bore down on them. Riley nodded. It's faint, but it's there. We need to trace it. Shadows lengthened on the bus as they whispered, the possibility of overlooked evidence looming large. With each step toward the back of the bus, their heartbeats seemed to synchronize with the faint noise. The dim interior played tricks on their eyes, but their ears were attuned to that single anomaly. Suspense charged the air. Every creak of the bus and shuffle of their feet amplified the tension, propelling them forward. The rhythm of the sound became more pronounced, drawing them inexorably closer. Its cadence was unmistakable, a gentle, repetitive tap and shuffle. Lara gripped her flashlight tighter, its beam darting from one corner to another. The bus's innards seemed to echo back the sound guiding the officers deeper into its enigma. They were on the cusp of a revelation. Navigating through the narrow aisle of the bus, memories of the previous search played vividly in the officers' minds. The familiarity of the space contrasted sharply with the heightened tension and responsibility they felt. Officer Lara, with a resolute expression, led the way. She began inspecting from the driver's seat, methodically moving row by row, seat by seat. The haunting specter of their earlier oversight weighed heavily on them both. Did we really check thoroughly? Did we miss something? Officer Riley murmured, wiping a bead of sweat from his brow. As the burden of doubt grew stronger, 
their confidence wavered noticeably. What if they had been too hasty during the first search? Anxiety and fear tinged their every move, every glance. The potential consequences of missing critical evidence consumed their thoughts. Their duty to the children, to the school, and the community pressed heavily on their consciences. A forgotten crayon, a lone sock, a dog-eared book, remnants of innocent children's everyday lives lay scattered amid the bus seats. As Lara's hands dove deep into seat crevices, each item she uncovered seemed to whisper its own little story. However, the one story they urgently sought, what caused that mysterious sound, remained elusive. The bus, though familiar, seemed full of secrets in its depths, challenging their every assumption. With every step towards the back rows, the noise grew more pronounced and unsettling. A rhythmic, almost muffled shuffle. Lara and Riley exchanged a tense look, feeling an unspoken understanding between them. Their steps, cautious and deliberate, brought them closer to the source. The shadows of the late afternoon seemed to deepen inside the bus, and the quiet, once reassuring, now became an oppressive, tangible cloak around them. Tucked neatly under the last seat, almost blending into the dark, grimy floor, a large black bag caught their flashlight beams. Its zippers were slightly ajar, a hint of movement stirred within, as if something alive sought freedom. Lara approached slowly, heart pounding loudly in her ears, her hand inching ever so carefully towards the bag's handle. That rhythmic sound, increasingly clear, emanated unmistakably from the bag's depths, hinting at the mystery within. Both officers stared, aghast at the black bag. How did we overlook this earlier? murmured Officer Lara, her voice barely audible, tinged with disbelief. Even with the flashing lights from outside piercing through the windows, the bag seemed to exist in its own pool of shadow. Its presence was an anomaly, an unexpected and uninvited guest aboard this bus. It seemed to challenge them, sitting silently yet defiantly under the seat. A slight bulge appeared on one side of the bag, followed by an unsettling shift. It was subtle, yet unmistakably a movement from within. Officer Riley's eyes widened in horror. Did you see that? he whispered, his voice betraying a raw edge of fear. The bag seemed almost alive, its contents mysterious but undeniably active. The weight of potential danger was palpable, making the air inside the bus heavy and charged. We should call the bomb squad, Officer Riley said, reaching for his radio. Every protocol, every training screamed at them to evacuate and call for specialized help. The nature of the movement, the uncertainty of the bag's contents, and the earlier threat made this more than just a cautious consideration. It was a possible necessity. Lara hesitated contemplating the gravity of the situation and the potential ramifications. Time seemed to slow as the officers exchanged a series of tense, loaded glances. They both recognized the weight of their next move. We're here now, Lara finally declared, her voice steady despite her racing heart. Let's open it. Riley nodded in agreement preparing mentally and emotionally for whatever outcome awaited them. They would confront this enigma head-on, together. Gloved hands approached the bag's zipper. Lara and Riley flanked the mysterious object, their combined focus so intense it felt tangible. Each tooth of the zipper seemed to echo loudly in the stifling silence of the bus as it was slowly drawn open. Every inch revealed felt like a year, and with each passing second, the tension in the air thickened, reaching a nearly unbearable crescendo as they braced for the reveal. The ominous black bag lay partially open, its contents still shrouded in darkness. 
the hushed atmosphere inside the bus felt suffocating. The anticipation was almost tangible, an invisible pressure pressing down on the officers. The zipper's path, now halfway, seemed to narrate a tale, a prelude to the unfolding drama. Yet, the truth within the bag remained concealed, keeping its secrets intact just a moment longer. Officer Riley's hand hovered above the partially opened bag, steadying his nerves. Memories of past calls, explosions, and the destruction they brought flashed through his mind. Officer Lara stood close, her face pale, but her stance resolute. Both officers, mentally bracing for the possible danger inside, took a deep, synchronized breath. They knew that the next few moments could change everything. With an air of cautious determination, Officer Lara gently pulled the zipper further, creating an opening just wide enough to peer inside. What met her gaze was not the expected jumble of wires or a ticking device. Instead, two wide, fearful eyes stared back at her. Shock registered on her face as she looked deeper into the bag uncovering its hidden occupant. It all became clear. The threat, the mysterious movements in the bag, the overlooked presence. It wasn't a bomb, but a scared young boy. The realization washed over the officers, replacing fear with a wave of relief and confusion. How did he end up here, hidden away? The scenario they had dreaded was entirely different and the perceived threat took a surprising turn. Riley, it's a child, Lara exclaimed, her voice a mix of relief and urgency. Without wasting a moment, Riley radioed for assistance, relaying the unexpected findings. We need medical on standby, he conveyed, ensuring the boy's safety was prioritized. Both officers worked swiftly to comfort the boy, and understand the circumstances that led to this peculiar and alarming situation. With the surprising discovery on the bus, Officer Dillon quickly grabbed his radio, its frequency cutting through the silent tension. Station Bravo, this is Dillon, Code Green, he relayed, urgency evident in his voice. He swiftly provided details, emphasizing the critical need to rectify a grave misunderstanding. As the call ended, the weight of their recent actions bore heavily on them. At the station, the call's significance was immediately understood. Commanding Officer Hansen didn't waste a second. Release Henry immediately, he ordered firmly. A quick chain of actions was set in motion. Word spread that the suspicions surrounding Henry had been misplaced. The focus shifted from accusations to ensuring that the wrongfully suspected bus driver was treated with the respect he deserved. Inside the dimly lit holding cell, Henry's thoughts were a whirlwind of emotions. When the metallic clang of the cell door echoed, he looked up to see an apologetic officer. You're free to go, Henry, he said softly. As the words sank in, relief surged through Henry, his weary eyes glistening. His reputation was intact, but the ordeal had left a mark. Stepping out into the daylight, Henry's gaze was instantly drawn to the familiar sight of his bus. Approaching it felt like greeting an old friend after a long separation. Touching its cool exterior, memories of countless journeys and shared moments with students flooded back. This bus was more than just a vehicle to Henry, it was a testament to his years of dedication. News of Henry's innocence spread as quickly as the earlier rumors. Ashamed of their hasty judgments, many parents approached Henry, remorse evident in their eyes. I'm so sorry, Henry, Mrs. Anderson began, her voice quivering. One by one, they offered heartfelt apologies, regretting their suspicion. Henry, ever gracious, accepted their words understanding the concern for their children's safety that had driven them. The emptiness of the bus was disrupted by muffled giggles from beneath a seat. Simon, with tousled hair, emerged, 
oblivious to the chaos he had triggered. Beside him were a few trinkets and the remote of a toy. Encouraged by older kids, he thought it'd be a funny game to scare the school with a fake threat, never understanding the gravity of his actions. Upon seeing the officers, Simon's jovial demeanor instantly shifted. He clutched his toy remote tightly, eyes wide with apprehension. I... I just wanted to play a trick, he stammered, tears streaming down his face. The officers exchanged glances, comprehending the source of the turmoil. The boy had been swept up in a game, not realizing the real-world implications of his actions. As the pieces began to fall into place, Simon reluctantly showcased his genius plan. He had rigged a small speaker under a seat near the intercom. By manipulating frequencies, he could transmit sounds that mimicked threats, all controlled by his toy's remote. To him, it was a harmless game of echoing scary sounds throughout the bus, never grasping its potential repercussions. The stern faces of the officers, coupled with the serious atmosphere, made Simon shrink in his seat. Do you realize the panic you caused? Officer Dillon asked gently. Simon nodded, sniffling. As the weight of his actions sank in, he whispered, I never meant to hurt anyone. The boy had learned a pivotal lesson about the importance of thinking before acting. When Simon's parents arrived, their faces were a canvas of emotions, anger, sorrow, and deep disappointment. They listened intently as the events were recounted. Taking their son aside, they stressed the importance of understanding actions and consequences. This wasn't just a mere scolding. It was a profound life lesson. They hoped that Simon would internalize this experience and grow from it. The auditorium buzzed with whispered conversations as students of all grades filled the seats. Principal Martinez took center stage, her stern face silencing the crowd. She recounted the recent scare, emphasizing the repercussions of misguided actions. Safety and trust are paramount she stated. The assembly ended with a call for unity and understanding, urging students to think critically before acting, ensuring a safer environment for all. In the town's community hall, parents, teachers, and town officials convened for a special meeting. Local psychologists shared insights into the impact of pranks on the collective psyche. Workshops were held, teaching children the difference between harmless fun and potentially harmful actions. Candlelit vigils were organized, where stories of real-life tragedies stemming from pranks were shared, ensuring the message of caution was deeply ingrained. The days that followed saw the town trying to regain its lost rhythm. Laughter began echoing in school corridors, parks were lively again, and cafes bustled with customers. The incident served as a stark reminder but the human spirit's resilience shone through. As memories of the scare receded, they were replaced with newfound awareness and caution, making the town stronger than ever. As Henry's bus pulled up each morning, children raced to board, their cheerful greetings louder than before. Parents approached him with thankful smiles and warm handshakes, expressing their gratitude for his unwavering dedication. The cloud of suspicion had been lifted, replaced with a solid bond of trust. Henry's heart swelled with pride and relief. He was once again their cherished guardian. With the rising sun, the town began another day, and so did Henry. As he maneuvered the bus through familiar streets, he reflected on the recent events. They had been trying, but essential life lessons emerged. With a renewed spirit, Henry continued his commitment to safeguarding his precious cargo. Each day, he was a silent hero, ensuring the town's children reached school and returned home safely. You like this touching and surprising story? If so, we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion. If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel or check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. 
Thank you for your cooperation.